All right, we are looking at, this is CC3. Uh, this is a section 3.1.5, uh, number 3-47. Specifically, we're taking some time to, again, look at um, given a rule, uh, make a table of X and Y values, and then graph and connect the points from your table on graph paper using appropriate scale and then label each graph with its equation. So those are the instructions. So let's start with A, and I'm going to rewrite the rule so we see it clearly. So the rule is Y is equal to negative 2X plus 7. So on my X and Y table, and the values that I'm going to choose, I'm going to start getting used to using pretty much the same values each time um, just to see what this graph looks like. And it's always nice to have a, a, a range in the negatives and the positives for the X. So I'm going to use um, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, and then 1, 2, 3. So seven values uh, is a good amount to be able to see what this graph is going to look like. So we'll start with that. So we put a negative 3 in to the x and do the math, right? So it's input, right? This is the input and this is the output. So in goes the x. So negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. And then add 7, so I get 13, right? So putting in the negative 2 into the x. So negative 2 times negative 2 is negative or positive 4 plus 7 is 11. Putting in negative 1, negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. Positive 2 plus 7 is 9. Putting in 0, I end up with plus 7. So it's 7. You can already see the pattern here. So when I put in 1, you probably can predict it's going to be a 5, right? Because of the uh, it's decreasing by 2 since I've done my x values in a consecutive order from a negative 3 uh, increasing by 1 up to 3. My y values are also going to have that pattern of some sort. And in this case, the pattern is decreasing by 2. So let's check this one. So 2, putting in 2, negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 7. Sure enough. It's 3, and we see that pattern. So one more, 3. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 7 is 1. And we see that pattern decreasing. And what, where is that at? Again, where that pattern is is in the constant in front of the x, that constant in the coefficient of the x. The coefficient of the x is the, con is the constant rate of change. It is the rate of change. And its rate of change is decreasing by 2 since that's a negative 2. And you can see that happening here as long as my x values are also in um, consecutive order. So there's my table of values. So what does this graph look like? So we'll go ahead and graph it. Um, and if I have a 13 uh, for my highest y value, I know I'm going to have to going to have a high y value. And I'm only going from negative 3 to 3 on the x. So I could just count in 1, 2, 3, 4. So I think that's good enough to have my origin or my um, uh, y axis here because I'm going to be able to go that direction. But I need to figure out how high. So I'm going to, let's see, let's count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I'll go one down to make some room. So that'll be where my origin is. So straight edge, make nice lines using your straight edge. And then my Y values, my Y axis. I don't need to go too far down because my Y's, I don't actually see are uh, in the negative at all at this point based on the values I've put in. So we'll graph this. Um, oh, on your axes, always good to do, right? Your axes show they continue. So I usually put arrows on my axes just so that way I, I know the axes does continue. And then label my axes. This is going to be 
uh, on the x axis. This is one, two, three, and then that's zero. So this is negative one, negative two, negative three. And then I'll label my y axis, but this I'm gonna label only the evens. So skipping one to two, three, and then four, five, and then six, seven, and eight, nine, and 10, 11, and 12, just to have my labels there. And I'll put a negative two down here to show that there's negative values on the y axis. Now, if I'm going to graph these points, uh, I'll start with the top one here, negative three, positive 13. So x is negative three, y is 13. So that looks like it's right here, right? So there's my first point, negative two and 11. Negative two, 11 would be right there. There's the 11, there's negative two, negative one, nine, right there and zero, so the x is zero, and y is seven. And we call that the y-intercept. That's the y-intercept where the graph intercepts the y-axis. Uh, one, five, right there. Two, three, and three, one. So those are the points I have, but again, keep in mind, what do we know about this rule? That there's an infinite number of solutions, correct? This can go forever, right? And and I, not just whole numbers, not just integer values, but uh, fractional decimal values as well. So that's why we connect the dots to create my line. So the connecting the dots tell me that there are values that exist in between the integer values that make this rule true. And then we also throw arrows on our uh, on our line, on our graph, our, our, our solution. And the last thing it asked was for us to label the graph with its equation. So I want to start, I want to have you start doing that. So label the graph. So this is y is equal to negative 2x plus 7. So label that graph, label that line with its rule, the equation. So negative, so y equals negative 2x plus 7. Okay, so that's A.